Welcome to Lesson 2, Forces of Globalization. In this video, we will explore the forces that have led to the world becoming more global and the effects of those forces have had on our identity. The video lesson questions for this lesson are as follows. Number one, what are the four forces of globalization? Two, what are some examples of global trade, transportation, communication technology, and media? Three, how are homogenization and assimilation related? Four, what is an example of acculturation? Five, how are accommodation and cultural revitalization opportunities of globalization? Let's start with exploring the forces of globalization. The four forces of globalization are known as trade, transportation, communication technology, and media. These four forces have sped up the globalization process and transformed our world into the global world it is today. Trade refers to the importing and exporting of goods and products from one country to another. International trade is nothing new. People have been trading goods and ideas for centuries. Ancient trade routes, known as the Silk Road, existed that connected Europe to Asia as far back as the year 100 BC and lasted up until about the time Christopher Columbus discovered North America in the late 1400s. People have always needed to exchange goods and ideas with other people for survival. Can you imagine not being able to eat bananas, pineapples, and fresh fruit in the wintertime in Canada? We just can't grow those in Canada in the wintertime. We have to import fruit from other countries that have a longer growing season. In exchange, Canada exports a lot of resources like oil, wheat, lumber, fish, beef, and others. Most international trade is done by transnational corporations who manufacture and process their products in countries around the world, and often in developing countries where labor is cheaper. Then they sell them around the world. Transportation is essential for trade. Today, the majority of products that are manufactured and shipped around the world are in large steel containers loaded on giant ships that crisscross the oceans. Everything from cars to toys, clothes to iPhones, and even food is transported on container ships. Without this transportation method, global trade just would not happen. Other forms of transportation that has led the world to become more global is air travel. Since the end of World War II, passenger jets and air travel have become a regular form of travel for people to move around the world. Thirdly, communication technology has revolutionized the way people communicate with each other. One of the most world-changing inventions in communication technology is the inter internet. Advances in digital technology has allowed the internet to become an almost natural way to communicate with each other. The internet connects billions of people on the planet through their smartphones, computers, and other devices. Never in the history of humanity have people been so connected with each other and have had so much access to information at their fingertips. The next generation of internet communication has become known as the Internet of Things, where everything around us will have an internet connection. This includes everything from our cell phones, coffee makers, washing machines, headphones, lamps, wearable devices, and almost anything you can think of will have an internet connection. Lastly, media has glo uh, globalized the way information is broadcasted and shared to people. Old media like TV, newspapers, magazines, and radio have evolved to be more global media, but they are still essentially a one-way form of, of broadcasting information. New media, such as digital media, has rapidly accelerated globalization in that information can be shared in multiple different directions. For example, in comparing old media like TV to new media like new to YouTube, TV allows a person just to receive and consume information in a TV program. But new media like YouTube allows the same person not only to receive, but also to create content and share and interact with others using that same content. The four forces of globalization often overlap each other in the globalizing process. Take for example, a product like a t-shirt and apply those four forces of globalization. First, someone in Canada has to buy the t-shirt. They can either go to a store or they can buy it online, which is considered to be trade. That t-shirt, maybe bought online, was manufactured in a country like Bangladesh, and it had to be loaded onto a container and shipped across the ocean to Canada, which is transportation. Going online to buy that t-shirt would have used communication technology, like the internet. And when that t-shirt eventually arrives, you might put it on and take a selfie of yourself and your brand new t-shirt to put it on Instagram, which is media. So now that you have understood the four forces of globalization, let's explore the opportunities and challenges that come with those forces of globalization and how they have affected our identity. 
One challenge that globalization has added an identity is known as homogenization. Homogenization describes how cultural diversity is being erased by the forces of popular culture and mass media. And eventually, everyone will tend to be the same culturally. An example of homogenization is how English is a dominant language on the internet and in global media. Popular movies and TV are usually in English, and most social media tends to be in English, which results in people wanting to speak English instead of their traditional language. Another example is how popular culture tends to take over local cultures. For example, the fast food chain McDonald's has restaurants in almost every country in the world, and McDonald's usually takes over the local culture in what is known as the McDonald's effect. The popular culture of McDonald's draws people to want to eat a Big Mac rather than enjoy their local cuisine. An example of this is once when I took students to Paris on an international field trip, the first thing the students wanted to do when they got off the plane and landed in Paris was to go to McDonald's. And they didn't really want to try a French cultural food. Another challenge that's related to homogenization is assimilation. Assimilation is when people, usually from a minority, give up their language and culture to fit in with the majority in society. An example of this is when a family immigrates to Canada. If that family doesn't speak English as their first language, members of the family, especially the children, might stop speaking their native language and practicing their own culture and only speak English and practice Canadian culture just to fit in to the rest of Canada. Most Canadians expect immigrants to fit in and assimilate to Canadian society, which includes speaking English and adopting Canadian culture. Another form of assimilation is when the majority in society forces those people in the minority to assimilate. This was true of residential school system in Canada during the 19th and 20th centuries. First Nations children were forced to leave their families and attend residential schools across Canada, where the children were taught only English or French and forced to adopt European and Christian culture and values. The Canadian government intended to assimilate entire generations of First Nations people into mainstream Canadian society, which since has had some very negative effects on First Nations people in Canada. A third challenge that the forces of globalization have towards people's identity is acculturation. Acculturation is when different cultures change their worldview when they come into contact with each other. This is often the result of immigration, like in Canada, where there's a lot of cultural diversity and people from different cultural backgrounds change each other. An example of this is Chinese food in Western Canada. During the 1800s, thousands of Chinese people were brought to Canada to build a railroad. After 1885, when the railroad was finished, those Chinese workers moved to communities across Canada and many open restaurants that offered Chinese cuisine. However, Canadians didn't necessarily want authentic Chinese cuisine as it wasn't what they were used to. So over time, traditional Chinese food became westernized to suit the taste of Canadians. Deep fried shrimp, chicken fried rice, and fried egg rolls are not traditional Chinese foods, but they are common in Western Canadian Chinese restaurants. So why is this a challenge to identity? Many Canadians may wrongly believe that westernized Chinese food is actual traditional Chinese cuisine, which it most certainly is not. And as such, they won't have an appreciation for real authentic Chinese culture. Acculturation happens a lot in countries like the United States and Canada that have a lot of immigration. Authentic music, food, and culture from around the world tends to change to fit in with the demands of popular culture. Okay, so those were the challenges. How about the opportunities that the forces of globalization have to our identity? One opportunity is accommodation, which is when people from different cultures make room for each other and ad adapt to allow people from different cultures to live peacefully. Canada has adopted policies of accommodation with legislation such as the Official Languages Act and the Multiculturalism Act. These laws created the policies of bilingualism. English and French are both Canadian official languages. And multiculturalism, all cultures and languages are equal and allowed to exist without discrimination. Another official policy in Canada is known as reasonable accommodation, which states that government institutions such as the RCMP and public schools must accommodate people of different languages, religions, and cultures within a reasonable expectation. So the RCMP accommodates a Sikh RCMP member to allow him to wear his turban instead of the traditional sets and hat. A public pool reserves time for the uh, during the week for female-only swimming for Muslim women who don't want to swim with men. And hospitals must offer kosher meals for Jewish patients. Another opportunity is cultural revitalization. 
This is when cultures are celebrated and preserved so that people can learn about their culture or about another culture. Some minority cultures who are in danger of losing their culture and uh, language due to uh, assimilation have discovered the power of the internet and global communication technology to help preserve their language and culture. An example of this is the Aboriginal People's Television Network, or APTN. This is a cable TV network that is entirely produced by Aboriginal people in Canada, and it broadcasts news, cultural shows, and TV entertainment programs that contain Aboriginal actors and perspectives. Another example of cultural revitalization is the annual Heritage Festival ev event in Edmonton. This is held every long weekend in August in Howarlock Park in Edmonton. And Heritage Festival has become the world's largest multicultural festival. People can go there and enjoy dance, art, and food in 70 pavilions featuring cultures from over 90 different countries around the world. This is a great way for people to revitalize their own culture and celebrate cultural diversity in Canada. This brings us to the end of Unit 1, Lesson 2. In the next lesson, we'll be exploring the role that global media and communication technology have in our lives. Till then, see you later.